What's up, folks? How y'all doing this evening? Hope y'all are doing better than me. I'm not doing too good. I'm nervous. I go to the doctor tomorrow for an echocardiogram and uh, they're going to also, they're doing an ultrasound on both of my legs and both of my carotid arteries. So, uh, this has to be done before my surgery, I guess. So I'm just afraid of what they're gonna find. You know, anytime you go to the doctor for some serious shit, like I'm going through, you're, you're afraid of the results. And I'm pretty much just freaking out. I don't know what else to do except drink and go fishing to try to get my mind off of it. So that's what I'm doing. I can't eat. I, you know, I, it's dinner time. I just can't figure out. My appetite's gone. I'm just, I'm nervous. And I've been just walking around in circles in the house. I just can't relax. I can't sit down. I can't concentrate on anything. So I figured the best thing to do is to just come out here and maybe talk about it a little bit and fish a little bit. And hopefully the fishing's good enough to distract me from my fears. So I don't know. You can't change what is happening. You can't change what's already happened. But the fear of the unknown is for it's real. And I'm dealing with it right now. So I hope uh I can only just hope that everything goes well tomorrow. And uh, I won't know tomorrow. I won't know until probably the 17th or the 18th or whatever, whenever I go back to see my surgeon, um, what the next plan of action is, which hopefully is my surgery. Hopefully it's not a bunch of other shit added to it. So. I'll be back when I start fishing, folks. Folks, I'm still using a really small uh, four pound monofilament on this. <laughs> so uh, if I get a big, nice big fish out here, he's probably gonna break me off unless I got some serious skills. We'll see, I don't know. I doubt that uh, the way things are in these lakes lately, I doubt that I'm gonna get a really big fish. But you never know. You really never know. Just can't tell. All right, folks, I've got a, a follower. <laughs> I don't know if he's subscribed or not, but don't look like it. Looks like he just came to look at it and went away. Dad grab it. He, that, that bass probably gave me a thumbs down. I'm using the black trick worm out here right now. And I drew it off of the bank and uh, when I did, I saw about maybe five feet away from it, something started coming that direction. You could see, oh, okay, maybe maybe this is gonna happen on camera. I think I just scared him. Yeah, I probably just scared him. It's real shallow in the muck. Ah, it's all right. I understand and being nervous. <laughs> I scared the bass. I'll be back, folks, if something happens. I don't know. I, I kind of get the feeling that your attitude has to be right to begin with to have a uh, good fishing experience. You know, it's just how they say you got to hold your mouth right. I don't know. Alright, I just had a hit. He's taking off with it. Let's see if I can if I can set the hook on this four pound line. I've got him. Oh, I had a bunch of grass too. Yep. Don't hold him over your drink. You don't want that fishy nastiness in your drink. Boy, he's barely hooked too. Got him right in the side of the lip. I mean just barely. He's he ain't he's barely hooked, but it ain't coming out. Wow. 
All right, folks, there's, <laughs> of course, what did we expect to be? Steve's over there. If y'all watch uh, Broke Yak's channel, Broke Yakin', Steve is over there trying to catch a damn bass. There's a big bass over there splashing around in the, in the grass, and <laughs> this big-ass bird is right there on top of it trying to think he can have some of that action. Man, that bird's bigger than you. I mean, that, that bass is bigger than your beak. I gotta scare that bird off. He scared all of my fish away. Anyhow, hey, he tore my worm up. I gotta get another one. He, at least I caught one, folks. And I haven't even taken my flip-flops off, but I will take a drink. I'll be right back. Folks, I put a frog on so I can cast far enough to scare the bird away. And as I was reeling it back in, a bass hit it. So the bird ain't the only one over there. Let's see what's happening. Bam! Mm. Oh, I missed him. Missed him. Came back with a bunch of grass. To me, it's kind of hard to set the hook on this frog because it's so damn thick. I, I mean, I don't know if I'm, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not putting the worm on the, or the frog on the hook right or something, I don't know. But let's try it again. I'll try it one more time. Nothing, he, he just, I went right past him that time. He ain't even gonna touch it. The bird has screwed me up. So I mentioned uh, Broke Yak and uh, his YouTube channel. He calls the big bird Steve. I think that the bird is actually called a gray heron or a blue heron. It might be a blue heron, but he calls him Steve. He's named him because he's uh, famous for screwing up your fishing. Yeah. And he's not scared of me, obviously, because I'm casting right next to him with this frog and I guess I gotta paddle up on him to get rid of him. Before I do that though, I'm gonna get rid of the frog and I'm gonna go back to the uh, trick worm. I don't know how to use that frog yet. I haven't quite figured it out. And I just, you know, I think that when, you, when you've got that much meat, when, when you got a hook in that much meat, and that frog is a lot of meat. You can't be trying to set that hook through that much meat into a bass with four pound line. It's probably not gonna work. So I'm gonna play it safe. Right, I got another hit, folks. Hey, he's a little one, another little one. What would you expect? Nothing but a little one. He's a little bit bigger. Yeah, he's a little bit bigger. Just a touch, not much, but he's a touch bigger. I've got to uh, park because the wind is pushing me like crazy. So before I continue, I need to park real quick and take him off the hook. Be quiet. I mean, I'll be right back. Yo, huh? Got another one on, folks. <clears throat> Over there under the dock. Oh, it's a nicer fish, too. Hopefully he don't spit it. Let me give him a little drag. He's coming out here at me. Got to give him some drag. He's tightening my line. Got him right, right here. No, he's not a bigger fish. He's not much of a bigger fish. He's just playing like hell. There's another one. Folks, my little plan about coming fishing to get things off my mind seems to have worked. <laughs> Actually, I just thought about it, so it didn't work, did it? But there's another fish, folks. It's, uh, I don't even know what the date is. Don't let me lie to you. I ain't got a clue what, today's Wednesday, I know that. But I don't know what the date is. I know every time I catch a fish, though, I need to put on a new worm, because that's how Zoom is. And that's how these fish are. 
they're tearing them up. They tear them up. Drink. Birds on that side, I came to this side. Wind's still blowing me all over like crazy though. Man, I don't see how y'all guys do it in the kayak. Crazy. Maybe it doesn't blow you as much because you're lower to the water, I don't know, but it blows me like crazy in this damn canoe. I mean, I just, geez, it just blows me everywhere. Look, I mean, you can tell by, yeah, man. I fight, I'm fighting the wind every damn minute, every second. I know y'all are too. I don't know, I never tried a kayak before. Maybe I ought to try a kayak make a video about that first time kayaking and fishing or some crap i don't know jeez but what i do i need to back off of where i'm going because that's where fish are and my damn canoes want to go right into them i can't even see to put the dang worm on without my glasses i'll be right back got another one folks no i don't all i got back was my hook <laughs> in my finger. Ow! Be right back. Damn, that hurt. Okay, folks, I've rewormed and uh, or rebaited, and I'm going to try that same spot. See what happens. He got away without getting a hook in his mouth. Maybe he's still hungry, or his brother or something might be over there trying to get a dinner or two. Somebody's barbecuing. Woo, woo, woo. Smells good. Hopefully my hunger will come back and I can quit worrying about things. And I'll be back when I catch one, folks. Let's drink. I'm just going to drink. How about that? I'm just going to drink. While I'm waiting on my canoe to drift to where I want it to be, I'm going to drink. Because I don't need to catch a fish as an excuse to drink. I'm 47 years old and I got a pimple right there and another one there. I got good enough excuse to drink. What the hell? Who the hell has a pimple when they're 47 years old? I guess it comes from worrying too much or something. I don't know. What do you think? Any of y'all uh, got any age on you? Have, deal, have to deal with pimples every once in a while? What the heck's a pimple? I, I told you I don't know what day it is. I mean, I know what day it is. It's Wednesday. I think it's the 10th. I think it's the 10th. May 10th. No. Yeah. I think it's May 10th, Wednesday. And it's about 5.30. It was about 5.30 when I got in the canoe. I don't know what time it is now. Hey, no telling. Uh, it's about 6. Actually, it's probably about 6 o'clock because... I've been fishing instead of drinking. I can usually tell how much time has passed by just looking at my drink. But not when I'm fishing and catching fish because I'm not drinking as much as I usually would if I'm just sitting there bullshitting. Got a hit, folks. <clears throat> Give it to me. My drag is, I think I got him hooked, but my drag is too loose, obviously. Wow, okay. Let's see what he's got now that he knows he's hooked. Don't spit it, boy. Oh my god! Oh my god, folks. I don't know if you got to see that or not. That was a monster freaking bass. Holy shit. Damn. And I missed him. He shook it. It's my bad. I lost one. I lost a big one. That was the big bass. That was a monster. That was probably that eight pounder that was in here. That is it. He's still in here. Damn it. That was a good one. I hope y'all saw it. Well, if that joker bites again, I'll be surprised. He's got to be smarter than that. I recognize that fish. Yeah. I recognize that fish. Oh my God, the wind is blowing me out of here. He's probably not gonna bite again because those bigger, those bigger fish like that, as old as they are, they know better. 
that was a freaking huge fish. That was way more than four pounds. That's probably double that four pound line that I'm using. He shook it and he didn't break it. You notice I had my damn drag set real loose and he was pulling it. So, better check my drag. Man. He was so big, he didn't even know he was hooked until he got right here close to me. That's how big he was. He was a whale fish. That was a bass. That was a big old bass. Damn. I'll get him. He's a smarty, but so am I. I'll get him. I'm glad he's still in here because I thought somebody had caught him and took him. I figured, you know, by now, because there's people all down there. There's people fishing all day long, man. They just come out here and they have no respect for fish. I thought he was gone, but I'm glad to see he's still here. I got another one, folks. And my line broke that time. I should have checked my line after that big old bath because now I just lost another one. Shit ain't going too good for me right now. I'm going to pull up here at this people's dock and uh, have a drink. Now I got to put a new hook on. I got to get a new hook out and uh, a new worm. I'll be back. Maybe I'll be back. I'll be back. So I have to go a certain direction. Oh, this is a dog, folks. He's trying to sound like a bird. I have to go a certain direction because I got to... It's a tough world we're living in these days, folks. We got people cutting down trees for nothing. Just to let them lay in the water. Just let them lay in the water. Oh, don't understand, quite, don't quite understand what's going on. The people that own that property never are ever in their backyard, ever on their dock. They're never ever out here fishing. But they cut a doggone tree down and just killed it and laid it in the water, as you can see behind me. Yeah, I know it wasn't a beaver because I can tell by the chainsaw marks on the tree. All right, about to have another one on, folks. Set the drag. Oh, he's on there. No, he's not on there. I got my hook back, though. He did me just like that other one did. He stole my worm but gave me my hook back. The line's good. I'll be back. Some little bass playing with it over here down by the dock where the public fishes. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing major. Got one this time. Oh, nah, I guess there may be a twig over there. They've thrown sticks and twigs into the lake to try to attract some fish. It looks like there's a brush pile on top of the levee. Uh, looks like they've been taking some of those twigs and throwing them in the lake. Folks, I got one way up there in the grass. Oh, I don't have them anymore. <laughs> That's what happens when you catch them in the grass. They get off.
got another one. Got another hit, folks. Let's see if I can. Nope. I have lost my worm once again. Now this is what three times now that they have stole my worm. I think I'm getting babies on the tail. And as I pull it, I'm losing my bait. Jeez. Louise. <laughs> Ain't that how you say it? Yeah. It's the only thing I can figure. It's that time of year, folks. Let's just try it again. I'm still aggravated, by the way. Y'all y'all know I came out here and I was aggravated about certain things. And I mean, I'm still aggravated, but now I'm aggravated by different things. <clears throat> I'm aggravated by uh, different things. I guess to sum it up, folks, I ain't having a good day. I mean, I've caught some baby fish and stuff, and I've lost one huge one. But I just can't seem to ignore the outside world. That's my problem. No matter what I do, no matter where I go, I can't seem to ignore the outside world. And that's what I'm dealing with right now. I can't, I can't ignore what's going on around me. I can't ignore these fish that are hungry, that aren't eating. <laughs> They're stealing my worms, actually. There's been a couple of them stealing from me from, yeah. They're stealing from me. I'll be back. I'm just bullshitting and fishing. That's what this is. Bullshitting and fishing. Folks, it's getting dark. But I'm getting back here into the corner where all the grass is and all the bass like to lay up in this shallow, grassy area. Back here in the swamp. So, uh, just late at night, about this time of day, in this area where I'm at, there ought to be some good action. So, Let's see what happens. Ain't got much left. The back of my neck is killing me. The way I've been sitting. Oh, hopefully. It's nice and calm back here, so that ought to be great. I need to be real careful and move slowly. See what I can do. But I need to keep my eyes open for the gator because he likes to hang out back here also. I'll be back when I get one. That didn't take long. And my line is broke. Again, folks, I don't think I'm going to continue using this four pound test after today. <laughs> I'm going to have to go in and get me a damn 10 pound line, put it back on here because that's what I'm used to. And now it's almost dark and I have to re-tie a hook because I just lost my, I just lost everything. I'll be right back. All right, folks, with four pound line and this grass, it's gonna be very difficult to uh, land one. Obviously, it's very difficult to land one already. They bust an ass all around me. All right, I can see them hitting the top of the water. But I got four pound line. That's, that's all I'm, that's all I got on here. And now I can't see my line. Once it hits the water, uh, I got one. I do got, I do got one now. He's coming out deep, he's coming out deep. Mm. I got him. It's a little one, another little one. Yeah, we finally got another fish, folks. Let's hope he didn't take it too deep. If he keeps hitting it like that, he's gonna break my line. I've got him in the throat. They're swallowing these damn things, man. I don't know what's going on with them. I'll show them to you at least. Just another small one. That one big one I missed, though, you got 
I mean, man, I wish y'all, I hope y'all saw that. I'll have to check it out when I edit this video to see if it got captured. It was one big monster bass. And he shook the hook. He shook the hook. This one here, he wishes he would have shook it. Folks, that's two fish in a row that I've had to retie my line on. Caught one, missed the other one, but that's just, you know, this four pound line was an experiment just to see what would happen, you know, to see what how I could do. And it obviously ain't strong enough. It's uh, good for those bluegill and uh, whatever, you know, shell cracker, baby bass. But it ain't good enough. It just ain't, it ain't gonna cut the mustard. And who cuts mustard, by the way? That's what I wanna know. My mustard isn't thick enough to cut. I ain't never had no mustard that was thick enough to cut with a knife. I mean, if you're cutting something, what the hell? Who cuts mustard? Folks, it's gotten so dark now. I've caught some kind of bush over there. I don't even know. It's some stray freaking thing hanging up. Whoa. And I've broken my line again. That's the end of my trip, folks. I give up. I, uh, I've had enough of this bullshit with this four pound line. It was an experiment and I won't do it again. Not with a plastic worm. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't know how many, how many, I don't know how many times I've broken my line and lost my hook and lost my worm, this and that. But uh, yeah, if you've watched any of my past fishing videos, you know I could do better than this. So, this was an experiment. And this is this is this is part of why I'm out here to try to get away from the world. And no matter where I go, the world follows me. And they're back there screaming and fucking hollering like children. I'm going crazy, folks. One last thing before I quit tonight, folks. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to get my bucket out of the lake. You know that bucket that I was, uh, that five-gallon bucket that I was casting at? Well, I'm going to take I'm taking it back because I don't want to just sit here in the lake no more. Collecting algae or whatever. So I'm, that's what I'm doing now. It's sitting high in the water. I think a bunch of uh, the water that I had in it has evaporated. There's a con piece of concrete. And I got a chunk of concrete in there too. Yeah. Wow, I don't know how I'm gonna do this without getting freaking shit all in my drink. I should have a knife so I can cut this line. What I'll do is I'll just do it like this. Bring it inside. And, uh, oh, it's heavy. It's full of water. It's gonna be too heavy to take into the boat. Yep, it's, it's really heavy. That's gonna knock me over. And then I'm gonna lose, your ca I'm gonna lose my camera. And y'all ain't gonna be able to see this video. So what I need to do is lift up the anchor. Uh, bring that up first. <laughs> my anchor is a freaking brake rotor. There's my anchor. Oh, it's all, the line's all twisted. Now, the next thing I need to do is get that concrete block out of the bottom there. Without tipping myself over. Actually, we don't have anything holding us to the bottom no more. Let's just get over to the dock where we're safer. <laughs> Let's just paddle ourselves over that way. Ain't nothing holding that to the bottom. Oh, 
stinks. Whatever that stuff is that comes up from the bottom with that thing stinks. Actually, that damn brake rotor stinks. It smells like I can smell rust, iron. I should not have put that in the water. That probably actually added iron or whatever that thing's made out of to the water. Which probably ain't too good for the fish. I don't think anything's good for the fish. It ain't nothing good for us anymore. Anyhow, folks, I got my shit. I got my shit bucket out of the damn lake, and uh, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.